fantastic. I'd want as many qualifications and skills as I can to open up the door for me in any sector. It's an apprenticeship programme in woodwork and board building. Although we work in wood and heritage skills, the qualifications are in modern engineering. Blythe it may seem a small town, but we do actually have quite a strong history. We've got a wonderful group of volunteers um, who do huge amounts. I think if you went around Blythe now and said who was Captain William Smith, they'd say who? And what was the Williams? They'd say what? Antarctica was discovered by a, a ship from Blythe. Um, you know, very, very few people know that. Um, it'll put Blythe on a world stage. It's a great day, um, just to celebrate the work. Uh, we're looking to actually recreate a, a collier brig, crewed by local people, to recreate the voyage of Captain William Smith to Antarctica. Nothing ventured, village life is not for me. What I discovered was that we had several things running in parallel in the sense that he came from Seton Sluice originally and I lived in Seton Sluice for 25 years. Um, he is a Geordie boy, I'm a Geordie boy. Williams built for shallow water his journey took forever and uh, he discovered a land and nobody believed him when he came back. It was incredible. And he went back again and again. It takes some tenacity to do that. To round the horn But the wind blew hard, the waves were high Storm clouds raced across the sky We hoisted sails and urged the crew to sing Blythe was actually shipping the most coal in England for many, many years. It, it, the, the tonnage ran to millions, and ships were sometimes stacked four deep waiting to fill up and, and, and take coal from Bates Colliery, from Limemouth Colliery, from all the collieries that have gone. On top of that, we had a shipbuilding industry. We used to build warships, we used to build colliers, we used to build passenger ships. A fascinating history which is all but lost now. And then those days the port was, was booming. Um, the shipyard had closed, but the shipyard was still being utilised by um, McGregor's, who used to make um, hatch covers for ships. The dry docks um, were still getting used by a little bit of ship repairing and, sh and some sometimes ship uh, breakers. But probably in that time, it was probably about between three and 5,000 people were probably made a living. Well, Blythe has had a pretty rough time of it, really. Uh, it's suffering from third and even fourth generation unemployment now. It's uh, classed as being in the worst 10% of deprived areas in the UK. What I know of Blythe, like, I try and look on the good stuff and try and bring that forward, because you can't really go move forward on bad reputation. You want a good reputation. Because there's a lot of young people who haven't got the um, the skills for going on and doing exams and everything, but they're very good with their hands and they need somebody to encourage them into that area and give them the skills, yeah. Where's your drill bit box? I learned a lot of skills. You know, I joined something I knew couldn't do myself. I've learned how to use most of the tools, uh, health and safety, a lot of that. Um, it's like fit, fitting planks to boats. I never knew how to do that at all. Basically lead weight with a pin at the top to push the nail through the wood. So when Jonathan's at the top hammering the rove down, the nail doesn't come right back out again. So it helps pull the nail and the rove together tight to close the gap on the wood. By doing that, it gives it a nice good seal on the bottom of your boat. This is really the heart of Blythe Tall Ship as it stands. It is where the skills that are going to develop the long-term future of this project are, going to, are coming from, and also the skills that are going to develop the long-term future of Blythe's engineering industries. But it's about quality. We're looking to develop craftsmen here, and we're looking to develop pride in work. 
is not just about getting qualifications. What we do do though, of course, is underpin everything we do with benchmark qualifications. So we deliver a level one MVQ in engineering, we deliver a level two MVQ in marine engineering, and that's all working with traditional wooden woodworking skills around boats. I think with more training I'm getting now, I think it's probably going to be easier for us. I've got a lot more under my belt now. Yeah, level one MVQ in the woodwork. Still doing the level two. I'm doing forklift at the minute. I've passed a singer bandsman's course and I'm doing welding. So I've got a lot under my belt at the minute. In terms of the the, the welding, the, the route they've actually come through is through our, our level one uh, work in, here in the workshop, in the woodworking uh, workshop and boat restoration. And what those young people recognise is that they need to increase their skill base so that they are more employable. I never really got a touch on using metal at school and that, which I would have loved to. That's why I'm doing like my welding course now over at the port. A few of the new courses that I'm doing, like my forklift course, my slinging course, which I've passed, my welding, I've done my health and wellbeing, I've got my port safety and working at heights. All of that's come off the back of doing this. We sail for glory to chart a land of ice and snow from the midst of my north. Yeah. Right opposite the, the, the berth behind us, where we'll have our boat. And then we're going to put the Heritage Centre here, which uh, will combine the current RNLI building and uh, another new build right out into, into the water with some great views. I see this as a, as a really great collaborative project. Uh, we're very pleased to be working with Blythe Tall Ships and the Port of Blythe to uh, seek funding sources, we've already had success of course, uh, to, to take this project forward. The trainees here will see that in the future they move on into the, the world of work and then that's not the end of it. They can come back and actually re-engage with the educational process, perhaps come back to Newcastle University and hopefully they will be inspired by what they see is happening on our boat, the Princess Royal. Just as I think the undergraduates will be inspired by what the trainees are doing on the boats in here. You know, it's, it's magnificent to see these, these things uh, being, being recreated and, and brought back to life again. The Blythe Toolship project works with volunteers to do three things. Deliver skills training, work with the heritage of the port, and to run an expedition to the Antarctic to celebrate its discovery 200 years ago. It's a huge project, as you can imagine, um, and putting together the, the project. Sir Ranulph Fiennes, he's the patron of the expedition. Uh, Paul Rose uh, from the Royal Geographical Society, um, he's the president of the expedition. Um, and really, um, we're in the process now of fundraising. I helped uh, put one of the uh, plates in, I think it was on the port side that I helped put You it can in. even go right the way around the world, um, provided you plan it and provided you take one step at a, a time. Uh, and the, the project uh, and the expedition is going through that same process. It's being planned at the moment. We're working out the stepping stones to achieve that objective. And that's the same for the young people in their, their lives, that they can say, that's what I'd like to do. That's where I want to be. Right, how do you get there? What do you need to do now to be able to um, take the, the steps towards that goal? Yeah, I've mentioned to a lot of people in Blythe about it. And I say, it's good, you know, I say, you learn a lot. I said you get a lot of appreciation for things you do. They want to be here, they want to do it. They're, they're saying that they're giving up their own time, they're staying till eight o'clock, they're working weekends. They really want to get involved and they want to see the outcome of the project in the end, the tall ship sitting in front of our building. And if they can advertise the jobs well enough, they might actually get more people, young people employed in Blythe. There is opportunities for them, for the right people, with the right attitude, get those skills, you know, take a little bit of a time, listen to what people are saying here. It's going to help Blythe, it's in a big way.
today has been the uh, reception for the tall ship Habet. And we've brought her back to life, sailed her back with the delivery crew to the UK. She has been the centre point for the reception today, which has taken place in front of up to 3,000 plus people of Blythe, welcoming their own very tall ship. The boat itself is 101 years old and she is a Baltic trader. She spent most of her working life in the Baltic and she's carried various cargo. She was converted about 40 years ago for passenger configuration and uh, she's passed through a few hands since then. She's actually been laid up for the last eight years. She's superb. We know she's got a sound hull, a beautiful engine, really good masts. We also know there's a lot of work to do, so we've got some planking to replace, the corking to do, the uh, rigging to replace, the electrics. So there's loads and loads of work, but essentially she's sound. Captain William Smith was a Blythe boy, and he set off on a very similar boat, discovered South Georgia, claimed it for the crown, and that was 200 years ago. So we're going to recreate that with Habet. The people of Blythe have really come together today. They've uh, shown the, uh, the welcome that can be given just for a single boat arriving, and uh, we're just knocked out by the whole event. I hope the people of Blythe see something really positive in it, and the young people of Blythe get involved with us and change their lives and, and create opportunities because of us. My captain's It is going to be a story that will be told and passed on and will become a real centrepiece and, and an inspiration for the regeneration of life.